Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Moscow's defence minister has said Russia's liberation of the self-declared Luhansk People's Republic in eastern Ukraine is almost complete. Sergei Shoigu said more territory had been seized from Ukraine by Russian-backed separatists and Russia's own forces. Before the invasion, President Putin announced that he was formally recognizing the so-called People's Republic and another in Donetsk as being independent from Ukraine. Meanwhile, one of the Ukrainian troops who had been defending the besieged city's last holdout posted a series of photos of the devastated steelworks on social media as he left the site. Well, that's all, wrote Dmitry Kozatsky after leaving the plant. Thank you for the shelter. Azovstal is the place of my death and my life, he added. Earlier, Russian authorities said nearly 2,000 Ukrainian soldiers surrendered at Azovstal and are believed to have been taken to Russian-controlled areas. Sri Lanka has defaulted on its debt for the first time in its history as the country struggles with its worst financial crisis in more than 70 years. It comes as the country experiences a food shortage on top of the worsening economic crisis. Queues for bread and petrol have been growing longer by the day, sometimes stretching for miles. The governor of the central bank said the country was now in a preemptive default. A decision in April last year by President Gotabaya Rajapaksa to ban all chemical fertilizers drastically cut crop yields. And although the government has reversed the ban, no substantial imports have yet taken place. Australians go to the polls this weekend with the opposition centre-left Labour Party leading the Prime Minister Scott Morrison in the current ratings. Rising prices will be of pivotal concern for voters as they head to the polls on Saturday. From time to time, the Prime Minister, whose centre-right coalition has been in power for almost a decade, has slammed his main challenger, opposition candidate Anthony Albanese, as a loose unit on the economy. The cost of living measures that he spoke about... Anthony Albanese said the Australian economy was crying out for leadership and reform. Almost two-thirds of Australians say reducing the cost of living should be the top priority for the next government. The US president has arrived in South Korea on the first leg of his trip to Asia as president. Joe Biden was greeted at the Osan Air Base by South Korean Foreign Minister Park Jin and the commanding general of US forces in Korea, Paul Le Camera, among other American and South Korean officials. He later met South Korean President Yoon suk Yeol who hopes to gain assurances from Biden that the United States will strengthen its deterrence against North Korean threats. According to health authorities and local media reports, cases of monkeypox are being investigated in several European countries, as well as the US, Canada and Australia. The new cases were reported in Belgium, France, Australia and Germany. This follows infections confirmed in Italy, Sweden, Spain, Portugal, the US, Canada and the UK, where the first European case was reported. Monkeypox is most common in remote parts of Central and West Africa. Instances of the disease outside of the region are often linked to travel to the area. Monkeypox is a viral infection and the reservoir is in small mammals, usually rodents in West African and Central African forest. And so people get infected if they come into contact in some way with those animals. It can then spread from person to person, but it's not very efficient uh, at, at transmitting. And so what we normally see is maybe one or two people get infected from that case and then it dies out because it's not very infectious within uh, human population. Firefighters in Somalia's capital Mogadishu have battled for about six hours to put out a fire that engulfed a market in the city. Banadir Market is one of the biggest shopping areas in the city centre and is close to the mayor's office. Prime Minister Mohammed Hussein Robal expressed his sympathy on Facebook to the traders who have lost their property and posted photos from the scene. And finally, artists in the small UK town of Hebden Bridge have created a massive bumblebee mural hoping to raise awareness about the plight of this key vanishing species. The mural, created to coincide with World Bee Day, was painted on the Pebden Royd Primary School using paints traditionally used to draw the lines for football pitches. It's the creation of Dave Martin and Jamie Wardley, whose daughter attends the school. Rising temperatures are contributing to drastic declines of bumblebees across Europe and North America at rates consistent with a mass extinction, threatening food cultivation. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.